Hello, I'm Sula, and this is day three of Eight Day Astronomer, where I teach you how to become a backyard astronomer in just eight days. In day two, I gave you some homework to locate the Big Dipper and Polaris, and if it's winter time, to also locate Orion's Belt Stars and the Red Star Betelgeuse. I hope you were able to do that. Now let's learn some more. And this time I'll show you how to use a star chart and your naked eyes to learn more about the night sky. And also I'm going to tell you how to judge distances in the night sky. When you first go outside and look up at the night sky, it might just appear like an impossible jumble. So to make sense of it, you'll first want to start with something very basic and simple like a planisphere like this one because it will just have the brightest stars on it and you'll want to learn those first. Some of the stars will be connected with lines and those are the constellations. And we'll go over the constellations in another episode. And this dark band is the Milky Way and this gray line is the ecliptic. The ecliptic is the apparent path of the sun, the moon, and the planets. But those objects won't be on your planisphere or your star chart because they move at a different rate than the stars. With the planisphere, if that's what you want to use, it will show you the entire sky. So you have to either face north, in which case the bottom of it should say face north, or if you face south, the bottom of the planisphere should say face south at the bottom. You can also use a paper chart from a magazine. Sky and Telescope prints one in every issue like this and also the Southern Hemisphere. And you can print charts from online sources and there are many. Or you can download an app to your phone and the best one in my opinion is Stellarium. You can also try Sky Safari and there are many others. And you just hold your phone up to the sky and it'll have the names of some stars and you can make it also show the constellations. I think these are great apps, but they only show a small portion of the sky as big as your screen is on your phone. And I think when you're just starting out, it's easier if you have a map of the whole sky like this, but whatever works for you, use it. There are others, there's a National Audubon Society's Pocket Guide to the Constellations, and for a more advanced star chart, there is the best one, in my opinion, Sky and Telescope's Pocket Sky Atlas. This is the Jumbo Edition. These charts will have a lot more information on them than just the stars and the constellations a lot more than a simple planisphere. So start with something simple, but I'm going to tell you briefly what some of the objects are on these more advanced charts. The numbers that are preceded by an M are Messier objects. Charles Messier was a comet hunter, and he made a catalog of all the fuzzy objects that he kept seeing in the sky that were not comets. And these are some of the brightest deep sky objects in the Northern Hemisphere. Some things on the chart are just numbers only. And those are objects such as star clusters, galaxies, and nebulae from the New General Catalog, or NGC. And then some start with IC, and that stands for the Index Catalog, of things that were omitted from the new general catalog. And they're also galaxies, star clusters, and nebulae. And that's about all that will appear on a basic star chart or planisphere. But we'll go into more detail in a later episode about those things. If you're using a star chart and not a planisphere, then keep in mind that the stars will be moving across the sky as the night wears on and also as the seasons change. And so they won't always be in the same orientation as they appear on the paper. These star charts always have north up. So you'll need to rotate your star chart to match how the sky looks 
But for now, let's just pick out something familiar in the sky to get started. And I'll tell you about distances. And when I say distances, I'm not talking about actual distances to a star. Determining the actual distance to a star from Earth is very complex, and we don't need to worry about that right now. When I say distance, I'm talking about the apparent distance of a star from Earth, or angular distance, that appears to us from Earth. So to figure this out, let's again think of the Earth as surrounded by a sphere. And we're the center of the universe. Yay! So if you point your arm directly in front of yourself at the horizon, think of that as zero degrees. Now raise your arm directly overhead, that's the zenith, and that's 90 degrees. And halfway would be 45 degrees. And you can conveniently measure these distances with your own hands because it just so happens that your pinky finger on your extended arm is one degree and three fingers on an extended arm is five degrees and your fist is 10 degrees. The distance between your index and your pinky finger is 15 degrees and the distance between your thumb and your pinky finger is 25 degrees. And by some cosmic coincidence, these same measurements can be verified by looking at some of the stars in the Big Dipper. The two stars at the end of the bowl of the Big Dipper just so happen to be five degrees apart. Go ahead, check it out with your hand. Extend your arm and put your three fingers together and point those fingers at the two stars at the end of the bowl of the Big Dipper. That's five degrees. And by the way, those two stars are called the pointer stars because they always point to Polaris or the pole star or the north star. We'll get back to that in a minute. Let's finish checking out whether what I said about distances can be verified by measuring the distances with your hand. The distance between the two stars making the top of the bowl is 10 degrees or the distance made by extending your arm and holding up your fist. And the distance from the last star in the handle of the Big Dipper and the farthest star on the top of the bowl is 25 degrees, the distance between your pinky and your thumb. Now keep in mind that as we discussed, the stars not only move across the sky as the evening progresses, but also what stars and constellations you can see will change with the seasons. But since the Big Dipper rotates closely around the North Celestial Pole, or Polaris, which is the closest star to the North Celestial Pole, you can see it year round, except from lower latitudes when it might be blocked in late autumn or early winter. Now you know how to measure distances in the night sky. But why do we care? Well, you need to know distances in order to locate other stars and later on, other objects in the sky. But the neat thing is that the Big Dipper is a guide that will point you to other stars. For example, the last star in the handle of the Big Dipper, Alcade, will point you to one of the brightest stars in the night sky, Arcturus, which can be seen in spring by making a big arc about 30 degrees from Alcade, the last star in the handle of the Big Dipper, to Arcturus. And you can remember this by a famous saying, Arc to Arcturus. And if it's springtime and you continue a line from Arcturus, it'll point straight down to another bright star, Spica. So the saying is, Arc to Arcturus and speed to Spica. Now that I've told you how to measure distances in the night sky, and again, I'm referring to angular distances and not actual distances. These stars might not be anywhere near each other in space, but they just appear to us from Earth to be near or far from each other. And that's the apparent distance or angular distance. But we can use that angular distance to find other stars. 
We have been looking north at the Big Dipper, but if it's winter time, you can face south and you can look for another familiar pattern in the sky, and that is Orion's belt stars. These three stars are in a distinct line and they're relatively bright stars and there are no other stars this bright in such a distinct line. And that line is Orion's belt and it can be used to find other stars as well. If you draw a line from Orion's belt down 20 degrees, you will come to the brightest star in the night sky, Sirius, the dog star. It's unmistakable, it's very bright. And when it's low on the horizon, it twinkles significantly. If you go back to Orion's belt and you draw a line upwards, you'll come to another bright star that is kind of reddish, and that is Aldebaran. It's 20 degrees away, and it's the eye of the bull in Taurus. It will take a while for these star names and star locations and distances to sink in, and it'll take practice. You have to keep going outside and looking up as many clear nights as you can. And finally, it will start to fall into place and the sky will take on a character. I don't want to overload you, but if it is springtime as you watch this, then you can use the Big Dipper to point to another bright star of spring by going to the other two stars in the bowl that are not the pointer stars and go in the opposite direction than Polaris and those two stars will point to Regulus which is 40 degrees from the bowl of the Big Dipper. So now you know a few stars and how to measure distances in the night sky and how to use a planisphere and a star chart and so now your homework is to go out every clear night and start with something familiar like the Big Dipper or Orion's Belt if it's winter time to get oriented and find one or two or three or four stars or as many as you can remember and use your hand to measure distances and use your star chart if you want to even expand beyond what I've been over in this episode. Just keep practicing and going outside to enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever, Sula, signing off.